I'm no beast when it comes to frame by frame animation. As a matter of fact, I only started learning it like two weeks ago. However, I think I picked up enough things that beginners such as myself can use to make their very first animation in Adobe Animate. So with that being said, let go. First thing you need to do is you need to install Adobe Animate and to install Adobe Animate you need to download the Adobe Creative Cloud. In order to use Adobe products you have to pay a subscription fee. So if you don't want to pay any subscription fees then um... I missed the part where that's my problem. Uh, luckily there are some free trials out there and if you're a student then you get a student discount. Anyways once you have the Adobe Creative Cloud app just click on it. Alright once it's done loading you're gonna see something like this. You'll have to make an uh, Adobe account of course. You want to search up Adobe Animate and you can just click on apps and then you should see an install button here somewhere. I already have it installed so that's why you don't see the install button. All right, once you have Adobe Animate um, installed, what you gotta do is just search for it and you should see it pop up. If you have the latest version, it's gonna say 2021, of course. Click on it and you're going to be presented with a screen that looks something like this. Got like a bunch of tutorials over here, but who the heck needs that, right? And you got my tutorial. We're gonna click on create new and we're just gonna keep this on character animation. And there are a bunch of presets that um, the Animate software offers you. We got full HD, HD, 4K, and standard. Full HD is pretty good. That's like typically the standard for like YouTube videos and stuff. You can't go 4K, it's up to you, but I'm just gonna choose uh, full HD here. Now I keep the frame rate at 24 frames per second. I'm not really gonna touch this thing. I keep it like it is. I don't know what the heck action script is, so um, it's gonna leave it. Once you make your selection, just hit create. So that's how you create a new project in Adobe Animate. And it's gonna show you all this gobbly goop. We're gonna go over this in a second. We're gonna go ahead and save this project as something. So just go to file, save as, and we're just gonna call this something simple, short, sweet, super mega ultra deluxe 2000 sensational animation epic and hit save. So like I said, short, simple, sweet. No need to make your project titles unnecessarily long, you know, just the essentials, you know. This is the stuff you're gonna be using to make your animations. It's so this big white rectangle in the middle, this is your canvas. This is where you're gonna be doing like all your drawings and stuff, you know, where you're gonna be doing most of your work. Now down here is the timeline. This is where you're gonna add frames and then you're just gonna add more and more frames to create an animation. So if you wanna scrub through your animation, you wanna look at it. If you wanna add some backgrounds to this using layers, if you wanna add some underdrawings, this is where you wanna do it, the timeline. We'll get into more details details about the timeline later. Now to the left of us is the toolbar. We have a few tools here. So we have selection tool. This is what we use to select certain things that we draw here. So we can click that and we can move this around if we like to. Next is the free transform tool. This is where you can use to resize your objects. You can use it to move it around just like the selection tool. Right here is the lasso tool. They just use the lasso tool to like wrap things up. They want to select, you know, wrap it up like a, like a cowboy, you know, like, like Woody or Lil Nas X or something. Next is the Fluid Brush Tool and the Classic Brush Tool. Uh, fluid Brush Tool, as the name suggests, it's a bit more uh, smoother. You can uh, choose whichever one you want. Next is the Eraser, and as its name suggests, it's just use the Erase stuff, but you probably already knew that. Next is the Rectangle Tool. You can select it and like drag it to create shapes. You click and hold it or right click it if you're using a mouse. You can choose other shapes. We have the Line Tool for drawing lines. Pen Tool for drawing um, you know, curves and stuff like that. We have the text tool. We use the text tool to add text, of course. Paint bucket is just used to like fill up uh, areas with color. Eyedropper tool is to select colors. Assert wrap tool. I don't know what the heck that does. Never really used it. Uh, next is the pan tool. It's just used to you know move your canvas around. Just click and drag. And finally, it's the zoom tool. It's just used to zoom in and out of your canvas. Apparently, you can use this over here to zoom in and out of your canvas. So you can just type in a value right here, like a hundred percent. You can also use a scroll wheel to zoom in and out, and you can use the space bar to pan. Now here are some more tool options. Not really gonna do much over here. Next is where you can choose different colors for your brush or whatever tool you have selected. Now to the right is the inspector panel or properties panel, whatever you want to call it. I typically just spend most of my time in the properties tab up here at the top. It's where you can change the fill of your brush tool. So I can like change it to like a different color. So like this. So I got the green color now. You can change the size of the brush and change the minimum size of it and smoothing is as the name 
can suggest just how smooth the stroke is going to be. I've only really been staying on properties for the most part, and I feel like I've already bombarded you enough with a bunch of information. Yeah, look on the bright side, we're done with uh, like all the tools and stuff, so thanks for sticking with me. Now we got the boring stuff out of the way, it's time to actually start animating. Ugh, finally. What we have on the timeline here are a bunch of numbers, and these numbers are frames. And the numbers above those are the seconds. So we have one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. So just think of a frame as an individual drawing, and there are going to be 24 frames per second. That means 24 drawings per second. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add some time to the timeline, so I'm just going to... Click and drag, and let's say we want about, I don't know, like 50 frames here. Now we have that highlight, we can press F5 on our keyboard, and it's going to add some time to the timeline. Now if we take our playhead all the way back, we can start adding some keyframes and some drawings to create our animation. So you got a little preview already of what we're going to be making. Just going to be creating like a little meteor that does like sort of like a loop-de-loop, -loop, then comes towards the screen. So this is going to be the path that our ball or our meteor takes. I'm going to right click on this layer, go to properties, I'm going to go to opacity, and I'm just going to drop the opacity down to like maybe 26%. Yeah, that, that looks good enough. Then I'm going to lock this layer so it doesn't change. And I'll go over here and click on add new layer. And this is where we're going to draw our meteor. All right, now I'm just going to to start drawing our meteor on top of this guideline. I'm gonna go over to the properties panel, just set my field to black. I'm just gonna draw my first duration of the meteor. So just a circle like, like so. And you're gonna notice that this little circle right here on the timeline is gonna fill up. It means that this keyframe has a drawing on it. Now I'm just gonna press F7 and I'm gonna add a new keyframe. And whoa, what the heck? A drawing disappear. There's a reason for that. I'm gonna tell you the reason for that. So in order to actually add more frames and make it look like the ball is moving in a certain direction, we need to be able to see the previous frame, right? So in this first frame, we can see our drawing, but in the next frame, which is an empty keyframe, you can tell by this uh, this empty circle here, we can't see our previous drawing. That's why we have to use the onion skin feature. To activate that, you just click this little button right here. It's like two little circles and boom, you can see our previous drawing on this next frame. You can drag these blue and green brackets to set your, um, your onion skin to a certain range so you can set it to the frame before your current frame and the frame after your current frame the stuff after your current frame is going to be in green the stuff before is going to be blue once again this is crucial because we need something to keep us on track to help us know where our last drawing was and now i'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and pan over i can just draw the uh next iteration of our meteor i'm going to try to make it about the same size uh, i think it's pretty good hit f7 and on to the next one so what i'm doing here by just just um, making a new drawing, then adding a new keyframe and drawing on that one. I'm animating on one, so I'm just, I'm just pressing F7 to add a new keyframe and making a new drawing. I'm animating on one, so that means that means one drawing is going to be used for one frame. If I was animating on twos, for example, I can click this frame and press F5 to extend it. That same drawing is going to be here. So we're just going to stay on that same drawing for a certain amount of time. So we have one drawing for two frames now, and we're essentially animating on 12 frames per second now. And you can keep on going on to threes, fours, fives. But I found out that um, it's going to look a bit uh, choppy or weird. So it can save you time because there's less frames to draw on. But you have to use it, you know, pretty carefully. If you've taken uh, physics before in high school or something, you know that if something is traveling at a pretty far distance in a short amount of time, it's moving pretty dang fast. So we can emulate that by drawing our ball a little further away from our previous frame. So maybe the ball or the meteorite in this case is just picking up speed and it's moving it further away from our previous frame in order to emulate that so it's, it's getting faster by increasing the amount of uh, spacing in between the previous frame and our current frame. So if we move our playhead back and we just play this see how it like makes this huge jump in speed that's just due to the spacing in between the the key frames here all we're really doing is just making a drawing hitting f7 to make a new frame um and then it's just rinse and repeat <laughs> I did a little bit of animating off screen. We're just gonna take a look at this now. Drag our playhead back to the beginning and hit enter. 
all right so not bad just gonna move through these real quick as you can see i have like the the ball gaining speed by increasing the spacing here and as it's going through that loop i sort of decrease the spacing because when i reach when it reaches the top like it kind of like slows down a bit and as i go down the loop i increase the spacing again to you know make it look like it's gaining speed all right, I'm going to focus on this last part here, and we just need to make it look like the ball is coming towards the, the camera. And how we do that? Well, just make the ball look bigger. So I just add a new frame here, and it's going to increase the size of the ball just like slightly. And as we go along the guideline, it's going to be at its biggest point at the very end. Go on to the next frame, make it a little bigger and not so big. F7 again, a little bigger. And there we go. So I think this part of the animation is done. So I'm just gonna move the playhead back and I'm gonna hit enter to play it. And I don't know about you, but I kind of like it. Of course, I'm not gonna say it's garbage. Like I drew it, like, like come on now. All right, we can do one more thing to add a little bit more pizzazz to our animation here. Make it look like a meteor, we can just add like a little streak behind it. So to do that, I'm just gonna hide uh, the guideline because we really don't need it anymore. And I'm just going to right click on layer two. So properties again, just lower the opacity, maybe like 20%, 18%, that's good. And right, now I'm just gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna choose my brush here, and I'm gonna choose a feel that's more fitting of um, like you know fire so i'm just gonna draw like a little fire streak behind our first frame hit f7 move on to the next frame and our streak is like coming into view a bit more here i always want to make sure you're drawing it behind the black drawing right as that represents the current frame you're on and it's literally the same process like we were doing before you know it's it's, it's pretty straightforward so i'm gonna keep on doing this and um, i'll be right back with you All right, I think I'm done with the animation. So let's peep this out. Noise. So I'm just gonna do like a quick little breakdown of uh, what I drew here. I added like this little curve thing to like the, the, the meteor to make it look like an actual meteor. So it's gonna be like coasting along here. And in this frame, it's gonna experience like a little sonic boom. So I drew this little thing to emulate that. So it increases in speed, the, the, the streak kind of dies down a little bit as the ball goes up into that loop. And as it comes back down, the streak is gonna increase in size again. Then we get another sonic boom in this frame. And the streak just dies out a bit more and finally the meteor goes towards the camera and it's nothing really too difficult it's not rocket science or anything it's just all about going in there and adding some details that you think will make your animation look uh, a bit cooler okay so now we're done with the animation it's time to save it and export it so we can put it on social media and get millions of likes stop the cap <laughs> So say you have your completed animation here and you want to export it so you can put it on you know, social media like you know, Instagram, Twitter, MySpace, TikTok. Just gonna do control S to save our project. I'm gonna go to file and then publish settings. This is where you can like change the different settings for you know, exporting your animation. You can turn off this HTML wrapper thing. Don't know what the heck that is. Just gonna keep this checked and you can like literally keep all these settings the same, to be honest. You can uh, choose the output name of your animation and you can choose like where it's gonna be saved by clicking this folder right here. And if you have any like extra layers in the animation that you don't wanna show up in the actual video, we do in this case, like the we have the guideline layer and um that's just about it we don't want that layer to show up so we can just click on include hidden layers to deselect it so that guideline layer that's hidden it's not going to be in the video then we just hit okay and we go to file export and we want to choose export video slash media this is going to export it as an actual uh video file 1920 by 1080 that's good you can change this render size so if you're making an instagram post it can be 1080 by 1080 so feel free to change the render size depending on where you want to post it you can choose the file location here and just choose export so this is adobe media encoder and it's just going to show your um your animation as an mp4 and the render time is pretty dependent on how hardcore your pc is so once yours is done all you gotta do is just click on it and your libraries will pop up and you can just choose your video start from the beginning and we can play it and our animation is now a um a video file so yeah once you have it exported you can post it just about anywhere um you know power is in your hands Oof. all right 
I think we're done here. Now, all that being said, if you enjoyed the video, if you liked it, if you learned something, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you don't miss a single Interman classic. Check out the description for a bunch of cool stuff. And leave a comment in the comment section. Why not? That's all I got for you guys today. This is Enderman from Enderman Arts, signing off.